There are thousands of no-code tools out there with hundreds of new ones being added each year. How can you possibly keep track of them all and know which are the right ones to implement in your business? In this video, we're gonna talk about the most important categories of no-code tools so that even as these tools evolve, you have an idea of how you can incorporate them in your business. We're also gonna jump in and give you a couple of our favorite tools in each of those categories. Now, when it comes to no-code platforms, there's essentially two main use cases and two different audiences of people who utilize these tools. One of these audiences are no-code builders that are are trying to build their own SaaS applications. So they're using no-code tools to be able to build, sell, and distribute their applications. The other audience that we have are more established companies who want to scale their operations using no-code platforms. So this group is less focused on selling a product and instead is trying to make their operations more efficient. We'll talk about platforms that work for both of these audiences. In our experience, we find there's a lot of crossover between these two audiences because we tend to work with more established companies, but they might have a new product Product or service offering that they're extending through no code. And likewise, if you're building and scaling your first product, once you're successful, you're going to need to scale your operations. And so you're gonna to look to the other side of the house for that as well. Hi, I'm Dan Lehman from automationhelpers.com and we help companies like yours get automated using industry leading tools. If you're a small business with five to 100 employees, we've got a new training for you detailing how we can save businesses hundreds of thousands of dollars a year through automation. In the training, we're gonna get really nitty gritty about where that time savings actually comes from to be able to save time in contracting, invoicing, and your client interactions, and ultimately reinvesting that time savings back into revenue generating activities in your business. So check out the training in the description below to see how you'll be able to achieve about a 12x ROI through every dollar you invest in automation. So you might be wondering to yourself, well, what actually constitutes a no-code tool? Let's take an example like Active Campaign. Active Campaign is a very powerful marketing automation tool, and it has a very robust automation builder inside of it. And it doesn't take any code to be able to operate it. Would this fall under no code? By my definition, I would probably say no. We're going to focus on tools that are specifically used to let us build our own applications, be it internal applications or be it applications that we're looking to build as a SaaS and sell. Well, Active Campaign is great to be able to integrate with your own custom applications. It's really designed as just that marketing automation tool. Let's dig into our first category, which is website builders. Now, unfortunately, this is some people's only experience with no code. They think no code is for building my website, but website builders are only the tip of the iceberg of what is possible when it comes to no code applications. Website builders are going to be used primarily for building your main marketing website, as well as different landing pages that you want to stand up. So the big player in this space is Webflow. Webflow is great for for collaboration. It allows you to create your own pixel perfect designs. So whatever you envision can be translated into what you can do through their application. You've got lots of sophisticated things you can do like creating your own complex animations. And with some of that additional complexity comes a higher learning curve. And so if you're operating just by yourself, you don't have a designer background, you might find Webflow a little bit more difficult to use. In that case, you'll wanna look at something more on the other side of the spectrum, which we have Card. Card has just about the lowest barrier to entry. It's going to be perfect for building single page websites or just being able to stand up a landing page. Now this is going to be perfect if you're iterating really quickly and you have a whole bunch of little products and ideas that you wanna be able to create landing pages for, I can't recommend Card highly enough. And then if you're looking for kind of the Goldilocks tool, what's right in the middle in terms of complexity, I really like using Framer because this gives me a lot of the design capabilities that you can do at Webflow, but at a much lower learning curve, something that I can do myself where I don't have that design background. Our next category is form builders. Now you'd think with all of the different no-code applications out there that almost all of them would have their own forms baked in. And guess what? That's the case. There are literally thousands of different form builders or add-on features that are form builders within other no-code products. And yet a lot of them oftentimes fall short. One of my favorite form builder tools that we use on a lot of our projects is called Fillout. Now Fillout, the part we really like about it is that it integrates to so many other of the no-code tools in this landscape. And they solve for a lot of really specific problems. 
Things like being able to use a form not just to create records, but be able to update them, or filtering linked records, or creating line items. Almost all of these scenarios, which are too complex for many form builders, you can easily do with Fillout. The easiest form builder I've used is called Tally. If you're looking for a Notion-esque experience where you can simply type and add new features to your form, Tally is gonna be a great fit for you. And if you need a lot of pre-baked integrations or you wanna do something more sophisticated with the actual layout, the UI of the form, then JotForm is going to be a great fit for you, one of the form leaders in the space. The next category is work management, slash database tools. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, work management tools, there's a ton of them out there and they've kind of emerged from this background in project management. So now tools like Asana and ClickUp and Monday and Airtable can all kind of fit under this work management umbrella. But the difference between an Airtable and a SmartSuite versus a ClickUp and an Asana is going to be the database capabilities. Tools like Airtable and Monday and SmartSuite allow you to configure your own custom objects or be able to configure your own tables with in a database. And this is going to be perfect for essentially building your own custom software. Airtable has a feature called interfaces, which makes it really convenient to be able to build your own custom UIs on top of the existing visualizations. SmartSuite really leans into its work management capabilities by giving you a unified area to view all of your tasks rather than having to go to each of your different databases. Monday.com is taking kind of a productized approach to this where they do have that database layer, but in addition, they're also creating a core CRM or a core product management tool. Now with each of those work management and database tools, it's really geared at the user who's interacting with that data. It's really focused on building internal applications. Contrast this with more pure database tools, which are going to be better geared at building your SaaS applications. Tools like Supabase and Firebase are much more geared at actually storing and retrieving the data. They're not as focused on a user actually entering data into that experience. So Supabase Supabase is amazing for creating SaaS applications. They have their own database layer to it. That's probably the biggest piece there, but then you can also handle your user authentication through them. If your application is storing media and you need to be able to upload different images and things like that, they've got their own digital storage. They've got edge functions, which let you run that computed logic from the cloud. And they're getting more into vector databases for AI use cases. So if you're building a SaaS application or an internal application, and you need access to much higher volume of records that you can store, that's where you're gonna to look to a solution like Supabase or Firebase. Our next category is for building internal applications. Now, arguably tools like Airtable would also fit into this mix, but there's this whole other world of tools that can connect to many of those work management tools. Softer is an example of this. They can connect to Airtable or HubSpot or Google Sheets as their data source, and allow you to build different internal applications like client portals on top of those data sources. No Loco lets you connect to a variety of data sources as well, but they also have their own internal tables so they can act as a standalone tool. You don't have to connect it to an Airtable. And they also offer a great deal of business logic that can be built directly within their application. Glide apps is a really great option if you're looking for very beautifully designed apps that are going to work as progressive web apps on your mobile devices. Now it's feasible that you could kind of tweak these tools to build an external application if you're building your own SaaS, but the main use case for each of these tools is building internal applications for growing companies. Integration platforms are up next. The largest one in the space is Zapier, a really easy way to be able to set up automations that involve a trigger and multiple actions that allow you to integrate different systems. But Zapier is definitely one of the more expensive options out there. If you're looking for another easy to use tool like Zapier, but at a cheaper price point, Relay.app might be a fit for you. In addition to their better price point, Relay is really focusing on their human in the loop automations, meaning you might have an automation that kicks off, but you want someone to have to approve it before it actually completes. Make.com is usually the consultant's tool of choice, it's something that allows you to do more configurable business logic, still without writing code, and comes at a much cheaper price point than Zapier. However, despite being cheaper than Zapier and more configurable than Zapier, it still doesn't really compare to the likes of Pipedream or N8N. N8N is open source and there's a self-hosted option available. Pipedream is really powerful because you can easily write code for it if you need to. And both of these options are going to be much more cheaper than the other ones that we talked about. There's kind of this emerging category that I would call no code AI builders. Now, as you can imagine, there's a lot of new features, a lot of new products, and a ton of hype behind this. So we're trying to do our best to just 
focus on what are some of the emerging tools that we think are starting to make a splash in this space. One is called Relevance AI, and it's essentially an orchestration platform for creating and interacting with multiple AI agents. Now, there's a ton of discussion happening right now about the actual definition of an AI agent and how effective these actually are. But it's really interesting the kinds of things that they're starting to be able to do within the platform. Another option is vector shift. You can build your own data pipelines. You can tap into different LLMs to be able to design these automations. You can create your own vector databases. You can make your own chatbot. So there's a lot of functionality you can do there as well. Perhaps the most accessible option is Zapier Central, which allows you to create essentially your own bot that you interact with. And it has different automations because it's got that huge library of 6,000 different integration endpoints. So that gives a lot of different functionality in terms of what you can build within the central platform. Now let's talk about some of the tools that you need to be able to build your own SaaS product. When it comes to SaaS, you're typically separating out the front end, what it looks like and how the user actually interacts with the UI from the back end, the database layer, the APIs and all the business logic on the server. So when it comes to SaaS, Bubble is definitely the largest player in the space. Now they've made some moves to change their pricing, which has aggravated a lot of their user base but it's still really useful for building your own applications. And that could be both for SaaS as well as internal users. Bubble also does have its own database. So it really fits into both the front end and the back end category. But for the purposes of this, we're including it in our front end tools. Now, if you're looking for something that's still really flexible, but has an easier learning curve than Bubble, then WeWeb is probably going to be the choice that you're going to look at. WeWeb's great for building full-fledged web applications. The one thing you'll need to bear in mind here is that you'll be using an external data source. So you You'll need to use another tool, some of which we'll talk about in a moment, to be able to pair with WeWeb as a front end. And an up and coming tool that we're keeping an eye on is Toddle, or the website is toddle.dev. They're open sourcing a large amount of what they're doing. Eventually, they're going to open source the editor, but it also seems like a pretty great experience for building your front end applications. Now, when it comes to building the back end of SaaS applications, there are lots of different options available. You could use some of the database tools we talked about, like Supabase, to actually power the back end of your application. But for tools like Xano and FastGen and BuildShip, they're really focused on creating a no-code API builder experience, different integrations, and the ability to create your own backend logic, as well as the actual database itself. Now, how this differs from a Make or Zapier on the integration side is typically with those integrations, you're looking at a trigger and one or more actions, and then really nothing else happens after that. You don't pull that information back to a front end. With these tools, you're essentially building your own API. So a front end application could call that API, which then goes through all of your different business logic and connects to your database on the back end, and then pulls all of that information back. So you're going to find tools like Xano have really cemented themselves as one of the best options for these no-code backend experiences. I've also really enjoyed using BuildShip because of their AI nodes. So one example, when I was building, they didn't actually have a connector available for the YouTube API, but I was able to type in a description of what I wanted and it came back using the API documentation with a pretty good connector. I still had to make some tweaks, but it was much faster than if I had to do that myself. And then finally, we have the category of tools for building SaaS native mobile applications. So while many of the front end builders that focus on building a web application give you progressive web apps, which means you can access kind of a hybrid approach to mobile applications that are built for the web, native mobile applications are going to actually be deployed to the app store store or the Play Store so that you can have users download your app specifically. The leader in the space right now is Flutterflow. This is going to let you create those pixel perfect designs you're looking for. It definitely edges more on the side of low code than pure no code. And with this comes a pretty significant learning curve. DraftBit, on the other hand, lowers that learning curve a bit. You're not going to use it for all the pixel perfect designs, but it's really good for rapid prototyping. And then if you're looking for the easiest option to build your own native mobile application, Adalo is probably going to be the best fit here. You don't get all the design options, but it's so much easier. You've got templates right out of the box to get going and deploy your own mobile application. If after watching this video, you'd like to hear our expert opinion on which of these no-code tools are going to be best for your business, don't hesitate to reach out on our website where we're offering free 30-minute consultations. And if you're not ready for consultation, remember you can always check out that free training that we have on how to save your business hundreds of thousands of dollars a year through automation, which you can access in the top pinned comment on our video.